Very good morning. Welcome to the breakfast news on Rajya Sabha Television this Thursday morning. I'm Ashwarya Kapoor with you, and here are the headlines. Prime Minister Modi arrives in Seoul, a two-day visit to include bilateral trade talks, interaction with the Indian diaspora. Ahead of the visit, a Prime Minister calls South Korea an important partner in Make in India initiative. Saudi Crown Prince Salman pledges all support against terror, including a UN ban on Masood Azhar, agreements on 100 billion hundred billion dollars investment in India, release of 850 Indian prisoners from Saudi jails, increase in quota for Indian Hajj pilgrims to 2 lakh. Employment generation in formal sector touches 16-month high as the data reveals creation of 7.18 lakh jobs in December. Over 72 lakh new subscribers added to EPFO social security schemes in the last quarter of 2018. In its meeting today, EPFO likely to announce interest rate of 8.55% on PF deposits for 2018-19. NIA takes over probe into the Pulwama terror attack. Northern Army commander reviews security situation in Kashmir. Security of 18 separatists and 155 political leaders withdrawn in the valley. And in the wake of the Pulwama attack, BCCI likely to ask the International Cricket Council to keep Pakistan out of World Cup for harboring terrorists. The top story this morning, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has arrived in Seoul, Republic of Korea today for his two-day visit. During the visit, the Prime Minister will have bilateral and business engagements and will unveil a Gandhi burst. His itinerary on the first day of the visit includes an address to the Indian Korea Business Symposium and the inauguration of Indian Korea Startup Hub. The Prime Minister will also interact with the Indian diaspora in the country, that number around 11,000. Though it will be a very short visit, barely 30 hours, but there is a packed program with a number of engagements scheduled with the Korean leadership, businesses and other stakeholders. The two leaders will make brief remarks to the media following their meeting. Prime Minister will then be hosted to an official banquet in the Blue House by President Moon. And the two countries will seek to enhance cooperation in diverse areas, including trade and investment. The MEA said that the visit will strengthen special strategic partnership with South Korea and add a dynamism to our Look East policy. Prime Minister Modi will hold a bilateral summit on Friday with the South Korean President Moon Jae-in on various irrelevant issues to the regional and global stability. The discussions will include the POXO steel plant in Odisha, that had been stalled due to protests and at the end of his visit, the Prime Minister would be presented the sole peace prize by an independent foundation for his role in enriching relations between Asian nations and charting a new path in maintaining Asia-Pacific trade and power balance. All right, we have with us our colleague Akhilesh Suman joining us from Seoul in South Korea. Akhilesh, a very important visit by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Of course, it is a very short visit, but of course, his itinerary is totally back today. And the MEA says that this visit would strengthen India's special strategic partnership with South Korea. How do you look at the Prime Minister's South Korea visit? You know, really, this is the time, you know, if you remember that uh, uh, Koreans are going to talk with, again, uh, you know, President Donald Trump, uh, the North Koreans. Uh, North Koreans uh, president will be meeting Donald Trump uh, very soon. And before that, Prime Minister visit to South Korea is immensely important because, you know, that this is the reason where both uh, Americans and Chinese are very active. You know, that South Korea is understood to be close to Americans and North Korea understood to be close to, you know, Chinese. Mm -hmm. But given the fact that India has been historically involved in, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, giving, uh, you know, 
know better chance for Koreans so that they can get out of the problems of war and India was very much involved in resolving the Korean war so that is why you know that Koreans feel very at ease with uh, India and Prime Minister Nan Modi is going also at a time when you know uh, the investment opportunity is in India has increased and South Koreans are feeling that you know India can be a better destination for them um, uh, in comparison to Chinese because wages are also increasing in China and you know wages are also increasing uh, in uh, South Korea so India is a better destination from they for them uh, they are feeling and that is why this is the second visit of uh, Prime Minister Nain Modi to Seoul and also this is the second summit uh, with uh, President Moon Jae-in and I think that in this talk they are going to talk uh, about a better opportunity for trade and investment and also uh, you know um, forming very close relationship as far as strategic tie-ups are concerned in the changing world situation where America is very actively trying to evolve uh, in Asia Pacific matters and India is also one of the major players and Americans have been telling that India and ASEAN also wants that India should be actively involved in Indo-Pacific region so I think this visit is going to be very important as far as uh, uh, you know absolutely and uh, you know uh, uh, in fact ahead of his visit in fact the prime minister has also described south korea as a very important partner for india's initiatives like make in india and he has also talked about the fact that the two nations you know uh, both are fellow democracies and uh, they share uh, uh, you know common values and vision for regional and global peace You're right. Uh, you know that uh, not only you know democracy is a very common thing between two of us, and uh, India and Korea share this democratic tradition. And also, other than democracy, we have very uh, strong cultural ties. You know that uh, uh, once upon a time, a princess of Ayodhya came here and got married to a uh, prince of you know Korea. So th that also uh, stitch very close ties um, between the two nations. And other than that, you know the Koreans have developed a lot in their own way. Uh, as far as the startups are concerned, innovations are concerned, and also in uh, you know electronics, manufacturing, in every field they have excelled. And uh, India can get better you know um, bargain with uh, South Koreans as mm. far as these technologies are concerned. And I'm going to tell you you know Aswarya that uh, in this visit I think Prime Minister Narendra Modi and President Moon Jae-in are also going to do some uh, Make in India initiative in defence sector because the Koreans. Uh, uh, feel that they can contribute to India's you know defense sector by making in India and also by making some uh, arrangement for technology transfer other than that South Koreans uh, are interested in you know space technology because India is considered to be very good in space technology mm. and Koreans are interested in getting a space technology so there can be a very deep collaboration between ISRO and Korean space agencies so I think right. this is you know a win win situation uh, there is a strong point of Koreans and there are strong points of India also. India in, uh, has a uh, very good influence in, uh, among many stakeholders uh, in the world and Koreans are having very exper big expertise in many of the manufacturing technology. So I think uh, this visit uh, will give us something new both to both Indians and Koreans. Aswarya. Absolutely. So Prime Minister Narendra Modi is in South Korea on the invitation of President Moon Jae-in and this will be his second visit to the Republic of Korea and the second summit meeting with President Moon. Thank you so much, Akhilesh, for all those updates there from Seoul. I will keep coming back to you in the subsequent bulletins for more on that story. On to the other big story. Saudi Arabia will invest $100 billion in India in range of areas including energy, refining, petrochemicals, infrastructure, agriculture and manufacturing. Briefing Media Secretary Economic Relations in the Ministry of External Affairs, T.S. Tirumurthy, said that it is a clear reflection of the confidence of South Korea in the vibrancy of the Indian economy and the tremendous opportunities available in India for investment. Both sides agreed to set up a strategic partnership council, which will be guided by Prime Minister and the Crown Prince and have ministerial representation covering all aspects of our bilateral relations. This is an extremely important development in line with the desire of Saudi Arabia to deepen partnership with eight strategic partners, one of whom is India. 
the prime minister welcomed the announcement of his royal highness the crown prince to invest us dollars 100 billion in india in a range of areas like energy refining petrochemicals infrastructure agriculture manufacturing etc the mea also added that india also raised the matter of indian prisoners that lodged in saudi arabian jails and received a positive response on the matter from the saudi side the mea said that the crown prince of saudi arabia has ordered the release of 850 indian prisoners who have been lodged in various saudi jails besides this the Uh, the Saudi Arabia has also announced the increase in uh, quota for Indian Hajj pilgrims to two lakh at the request of India. The MEA also added the Prime Minister and Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman underlined the importance of comprehensive sanctioning of terrorists and terror organizations by the United Nations. Saudi Arabia have decided to increase the quota for Hajj pilgrims from India to two lakhs. this gesture was deeply appreciated india has also decided to extend e visa facilities to saudi nationals issue of prisoners was discussed and uh, uh, the reaction uh, from the saudi side was a positive reaction but at this point of time we are working through this but it was very much taken up And meanwhile on Wednesday uh, Saudi prince Salman held extensive talks with Prime Minister Narendra Modi and backed India's fight against terrorism. Both the nations also signed five agreements. Here are all the details. Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman started his two-day visit to India on 19th February. He was received by Prime Minister Narendra Modi at the airport. a gesture that signifies the importance india attaches to relations with the powerful gulf country in delhi the saudi prince was accorded a ceremonial reception at the rashtrapati bhavan where he inspected a guard of honor ahead of bilateral talks with the prime minister prince mohammed bin salman spoke about the admiration he had for the indian prime minister he described modi as his elder brother about 80% of the arabian peninsula it goes uh, to thousands of uh, year of history even before history is written so uh, the relation between india and the arabian peninsula is in our dna in saudi and saudi yeah. arabia <laughs> adding a new dimension to the historical ties india and saudi arabia signed five agreements these are in the areas of investment tourism housing and information and broadcasting further to consolidate and diversify the partnership between the two countries prime minister modi and the saudi crown prince held extensive talks on areas of mutual interest hamare urja sambandhon ko strategic partnership mein tabdil karne ka samay aa gaya hai duniya ki sabse badi refinery aur strategic petroleum reserve mein saudi arab ki bhagidari हमारे ऊर्जा संबंधों को बायर सेलर रिलेशन से बहुत आगे ले जाती हैं हम समझते हैं कि भारत में जो अपॉर्चुनिटीज हैं वो हंड्रेड बिलियन से ज्यादा हैं और हम चाहते हैं कि हम सऊदी अरब के साथ मिलकर इन्वेस्टमेंट्स को दोनों देशों के लिए फायदेमंद बनाए फायदेमंद बनाए In the wake of the Pulwama terror attack both leaders agreed there is a need to increase all possible pressure on countries supporting terrorism Pulwama mein hua barbar aatankwadi hamla is manavta virodhi khatre se duniya par chhaye keher ki ek aur krur nishani hai is khatre se prabhavshali dhang se nipatne ke liye hum is baat par sahmat hai कि आतंकवाद को किसी भी प्रकार का समर्थन दे रहे देशों पर सभी संभव दबाव बढ़ाने की आवश्यकता है आतंकवाद का इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर नष्ट करना और इसको समर्थन समाप्त करना और आतंकवादियों और उनके समर्थकों को सजा दिलाना बहुत ही जरूरी है मुझे खुशी है कि सऊदी अरब और भारत इस बारे में साझा विचार रखते हैं
The Saudi Crown Prince did not mention the Pulwama terror attack, but said terrorism and extremism are common concerns. He also promised that Saudi Arabia will extend all possible cooperation to India and other neighboring countries to deal with terrorism. एक्सट्रीमिज्म और टेररिज्म की बात है जो हमारे कॉमन कंसर्न है हम ये बात बताना चाहते हैं भारत को हम दोस्त भारत को बताना चाहते हैं कि हम आपके साथ हर तरह का कोऑपरेशन करेंगे चाहे वो इंटेलिजेंस शेयर हो और न सिर्फ भारत बल्कि सारे जो जो हमारे आसपास हैं सब मिल सब के साथ मिलकर काम करेंगे जो हमारे आने वाली पीढ़ियों के लिए भविष्य रोशन भविष्य को सिक्योर करेंगे External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj also called on the Saudi Crown Prince during his brief visit to India. The maiden visit of the Saudi Crown Prince to India came at the invitation of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. The Prime Minister had invited him during the bilateral meeting between the two countries on the sidelines of the G20 summit in Argentina last November. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. And the Jammu and Kashmir administration has withdrawn the security of 18 separatists and 155 political leaders after a security review meeting held under the chairmanship of a state chief secretary. Now, these leaders include uh, Wahid Para, a close aide of former Chief Minister Mehbooba Mufti and uh, former bureaucrat Shah Faisal. The security cover of separatist leaders, including uh, Sayyid Ali Shah Gilani and Yasin Malik, was also withdrawn. Through this, over 1,000 police personnel and over 100 vehicles are now free to do their regular police work. Also on Wednesday, Northern Army Commander Lieutenant General Ranbir Singh reviewed the security situation in Kashmir two days after top jesh e mohammed terrorists were killed in an encounter in Pulwama district. Three JEM terrorists, including two top commanders behind the Pulwama terror attack, were killed in a fierce 16-hour encounter in which an army major and four security forces personnel also lost their lives in South Kashmir on Monday. Meanwhile, the National Investigation Agency took over the probe into the terror attack in Pulwama from Jammu and Kashmir police. The agency has re-registered the case and formed a team to investigate the terror strike. The agency has also met a senior police, intelligence and army officers to gather evidences. On to some other news now. India on Wednesday urged the International Court of Justice or the ICJ to annul Kulbushan Jadav's death sentence and ensure his safe passage to India. Making a final submission in the ICJ on the third day of the hearing, Deepak Mittal, Joint Secretary in the Ministry of External Affairs, requested the ICJ judges to direct a trial under normal laws before civilian courts with full counsellor access to Jadav. India requested the top UN court to declare that Pakistan acted in breach of Article 36 of the Vienna Convention and failed to inform Jadav of his rights and declined counsellor access to him. India also strongly objected to the abusive language used by Pakistan's counsel in the Jadav case at the ICJ, urging the UN court to draw a red line. The Pakistan now will also get uh, 90 minutes to respond to India's arguments today. The ICJ is expected to deliver its verdict in the summer of this year. It takes exception to being addressed in this fashion in an international court. Beyond saying this, I would let the matter rest, for I do not, and the Indian culture prevents me from indulging in similar language of invectives and insults. India believes we have a strong case. And so we have, sir, as the saying is, hammered the facts and hammered the law. As the old lawyer saying goes, when you're strong on the law, you hammer the law. If you're strong on the facts, you hammer the facts. And when you have neither on your side, you hammer the table. Bereft of a case, Pakistan has hammered the proverbial table. On some other news, employment generation in the formal sector almost trebled to reach a 16-month high of 7.16 lakh in December last year as compared to 2.37 lakh in the year-ago month, according to the latest EPFO payroll data. Now, as per the data, around 72.32 lakh new subscribers were also added to the social security schemes of the Employees Provident Fund organization from September 2017 to December 2018, indicating that these many jobs were created in the last 16 months. 
Meanwhile, the EPFO is likely to announce uh, an interest rate of 8.55% on the PF deposits for 2018-19, same as provided in 2017-18 to its uh, 6 crore subscribers. The minimum pension paid is also likely to be raised from 1,000 rupees per month to 2,000 rupees per month. On to some political news, days after BJP and AIA-DMK alliance in Tamil Nadu, Congress on Thursday announced an alliance with the DMK in the state. The Congress will contest on nine seats in Tamil Nadu and one in Puducherry in the Lok Sabha polls this year. There are a total of 39 Lok Sabha constituencies in Tamil Nadu and one in Puducherry. The announcement was made by DMK President MK Stalin at the DMK party headquarters in the presence of Congress General Secretary in charge of Tamil Nadu, Mukul Vasnik, KC Venu Gopal and other senior leaders. DMK President MK Stalin said that the Congress constituencies will be announced after discussion with the other allies including NDMK, CPI, CPIML and VCK. In the 2014 general elections, both the DMK and the Congress, who broke their alliance ahead of the elections, had not won a single seat. The agreement comes a day after the ruling AIA DMK stitched an alliance with the BJP and PMK, allotting them five and seven Lok Sabha seats in the state, respectively. Congress is going to contest 10 seats, including Pondicherry. Of course, the country, the country is very much needed this alliance. You know the entire country is disappointed with the Narendra Modi government last five years, what he has been promised to the people of the country, nothing has been fulfilled. And the Goods and Services Tax Council has uh, deferred a decision on tax rates on real estate and lottery till 24th of February. The council, however, extended the deadline for businesses uh, to file sales returns for January. The due date has been extended till 22nd of February for all states and 28th of February for Jammu and Kashmir. Finance Minister Arun Jaitley said that because of the rush of filing of returns, the due date has been extended till 22nd of February for all states and 28th of February for Jammu and Kashmir. The GST Council was also slated to discuss the reports of group of ministers on under construction, housing, property and lottery. Ministers from all states attended this meeting. आज जो three B की returns है उसका last date है देश भर में उसको जो returns आ रही हैं जिस speed पे और हर घंटे में हजारों की संख्या में आती है कि दिनों में लाखों की संख्या में आती हैं तो उस date को council का सुझाव था कि दो दिन के लिए और extend कर दिया जाए 22 तारीख midnight तक जम्मू कश्मीर में क्योंकि कुछ एरियाज में डिस्टरबेंस है तो उसको 28 फरवरी तक एक्सटेंड कर दिया गया है एंड द सुप्रीम कोर्ट ऑन वेंसडे फिक्स्ड 26th ऑफ फरवरी एज द नेक्स्ट डेट ऑफ हियरिंग इन अयोध्याज राम जन्मभूमि बाबरी मस्जिद लैंड डिस्प्यूट मैटर इट विल बी हर्ड बाय अ फाइव जज कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन बेंच हेडेड बाय चीफ जस्टिस रंजन गोगोई on 27th of January, the Apex Court had cancelled the scheduled hearing for 29th of January as one of the five judges of the Constitution bench was not available on that day. The bench will now hear the appeals against the 2010 Allahabad High Court judgment that said that the 2.77 acre land in Ayodhya be partitioned equally among three parties, namely the Sunni Waqf Board, the Nirmohi Akhara and Ram Lalla. Sports news now. Afghanistan will host Ireland for a full series starting away the T20s from today at the Doon Sports Club in Dehradun. The series comprises of three T20 internationals, five one-day internationals and a test match. The test match will be Ireland's first overseas test game and second for both the newest teams at highest level after ICC awarded full membership to both the nations last year. The first T20 will start at 6.30 p.m. today, while the second and the third will be played on 23rd and 24th of February, respectively, at the same venue. 
And in the wake of the Pulwama terror attack, a board of control for cricket in India or the BCCI is planning to write to the International Cricket Council or the ICC to keep Pakistan out of the World Cup. According to reports, a committee of administrators a chairman Vinod Rai has asked a BCCI CEO Rahul Jori to write a letter to the ICC asking for Pakistan be kept out of the Cricket World Cup. Rai asked Jori to write a letter to keep the Pakistani side out of the World Cup Cup. For continuing to harbour terrorists, Rahul Jori would uh, be representing BCCI at the ICC quarterly meeting, which starts from 27th of February, with the COA possibly meeting on Friday to discuss the matter further. And with that, we wrap up this edition of Breakfast News. Thanks for watching. Have a great day ahead.